don't worry if all of this seems daunting. I mean, all the things that Ed just went through, we are going to go through all, all of this class. So we'll bring back issues of um, ideas and the criteria for, for bringing up ideas and NIH. These are common things you're going to see throughout the class. But today we wanted to give you an overview of, of some of the things that, um, that we're doing. OK, so I'm going to start by, um, uh, I'm going to give two presentations. Um, I'll try to keep it to about 30 to 40 minutes so that we can go to the breakout session so you can introduce yourself. Um, I'm going to start with a, a very general discussion of ethics and science. And because this is a writing intensive class, um, obviously I want to touch on issues of plagiarism. So that's really going to be the main focus. And then I'll turn over to another presentation where we'll talk about how to read a scientific paper. I'll give you some tips and then we'll go through the assignment that you have for next time. Um, and let me say this is, will be the format of the class in general for the for this um, for this class. We're going to give some uh, basic information. You'll see there will be some in class activities I'll do with you during these presentations and then um, you'll go to your breakout sessions to talk more specifically with your group. So, okay, so let's talk about um, this ethics in science. So ethics in science is really much bigger than just plagiarism. And so um, I wanted to start kind of with a bigger picture of, um, of, of ethics. So first of all, what is ethics? Ethics is, the, um, the, in our case, the system of moral principles that govern appropriate conduct um, in, our, um, in, our, uh, in our science. So we want to make sure that um, that our science is built on a foundation of ethical guidelines. And you might ask yourself, why is that important? And that's because any kind of misconduct, any kind of misconduct, and I hope I make this point clear in this presentation, can has the potential to corrupt our progress toward bettering our world. Our credibility as a scientific community uh, expects for us to be honest in every form that we have, and that's why something um, as big or as little as you can think of is important for us to be ethical. We need to be honest, we need to be truthful, we need to present what we learn um, as we learn it so that, um, that, that, that the public can trust us with our science. So there's a lot of ways you can think about ethics. In the classroom, you know this one very well. Um, this is what you've done as undergraduates and this first year in the classroom. Ethics means taking exams and making sure that the work is your own. Um, now that you're transitioning to the laboratory, it becomes important for you to be uh, ethical in your data acquisition, in reporting that data, um, and in um, giving credit to who obtains data. And of course, any kind of misconduct when it comes to data acquisition is considered lying. And this is why people um, uh, are banned from our communities in, in very extreme cases. Now, of course, that's not going to be the focus of our class either. What we're going to focus on in our class is the writing, the dissemination of our ideas in the form of writing. So scientific writing is really our point, and really um, scientific writing comes down to issues of copying or plagiarism. And so this is where I'll focus now on, um, on plagiarism. But please understand all of these forms of cheating corrupt the very, very important uh, trust that the public has in the scientific community to report our data um, ethically. Okay, so, um, so, um, Oh, that was cool. I don't know what I just did. Okay, so the next, um, so what I want to um, move towards is, um, oh, I guess I do have a slide here on, on fabrication of data. I mean, this is probably the height of all of ethics in science. If you make up data, if you report faulty data, I mean, this is where the public really loses credibility on a, in us, and we really can't have that. And in fact, there are many stories like this, but I picked this one from 2002 where a pioneering physics paper they noticed that the data, if you can see these three figures, the, the, the data looks very similar. And, and so they found that um, there was misconduct done here. And people lose their jobs for things like this. So we need to make sure this never happens. Um, and so please understand this is really the height of, of, of misconduct. Um, plagiarism, you might think to yourself, oh, plagiarism, copying somebody else's words, that's not so bad. But, but the fact is it, it, the fact is, it is, is bad. 
and you really, uh, I'll talk at the end about why we have to take this seriously, but, but let's first um, talk about what plagiarism is. Plagiarism is copying somebody else, what somebody else has written, or take somebody else's ideas and try to pass it off as your own. And so um, this is really a problem um, because we need to be honest and truthful and ethical in every form of science, and that includes writing. Okay, so let's talk about plagiarism. And I guess I need to move to my presentation here for you to see this. So can you see that, Ed, that's good? Yeah, okay. So, um, so here are the rules um, uh, when it comes to ethics in, in writing. Um, uh, oftentimes, maybe you did this as an undergraduate, you can copy an idea from a source and you put that quotes, the quote in, the copied words in quotations and then you reference where you got the source. And that is perfectly acceptable in writing in English and history, but the fact is that is not appropriate for science. We literally never in scientific writing quote other people's words. The reason we don't do that is because oftentimes what they said is not perfectly appropriate for what we need to say. Instead, what's much better and what's acceptable in science is that we paraphrase. We read an idea or a thought from a source, we put the source away, and then we write in our own words what information we gain from that source. The value for scientific writing is that you can more concisely and accurately include that topic into your bigger paper. If you cut and paste and quote people, the fact is the writing would become very verbose and the fact is that scientific writing is all about concise, simple writing, something that we will talk about a lot in this class um, throughout the class. So paraphrasing is what we do here so we can achieve that simple, concise, straightforward language that we want to um, convey our ideas. Um, I should also say that when a concept is common knowledge, um, so this would be something that I often say common knowledge is something that like my parents would know. It didn't have to be an expert in science, just somebody who's kind of knowledgeable. No sources required and you don't have to reference anything, but again, it still needs to be in your own words. It needs to be words that you put together to make a sentence. Okay, does that make sense? Um, so paraphrasing is what we do. So let's talk about how you paraphrase because paraphrasing is really um, what you're going to be doing when you start writing. So here are some simple guidelines. First of all, you want to read and reread the original source until you understand what you like from it, what you need from it for your paper. Then. Very important, very important. Put the original source away. You should write when that source is not in your sight and absolutely never cut and paste. I know some students tell me, oh, I cut and paste expecting to go back and change it. Just don't do it. If you never cut and paste, you'll never plagiarize. You will use your own words, okay? So no cut and paste, get the source out of your line of sight and then write in your own words. Now, you may not be very confident with your own words as we start this class. I know that many of you are writing scientifically for the first time. So it's absolutely expected that you would be maybe a little bit, you know, uh, worried about your, your word choice. But folks, you're never gonna learn how to be experienced writers if you rely on other people's words. So what you need to do is take, take this opportunity that we're giving you to really learn how to write effectively in your own words achieve your own style really learn what you love about writing and we can we'll help you through that and but, but please understand that even though ed and i have been doing writing we've been writing for scientifically for years and years we still are perfecting our own writing skills so no matter how old you are um, you are always going to be getting better and better at writing um, at, at writing chat tasks. So, so please don't think that you're going to be an expert at this right away, but you got to practice to make perfect. Okay, so we got to keep practicing. All of us do. And then finally, if you're really concerned about plagiarism, you can compare your own words that you just wrote to what you took from what what from your source from the words from your source, and make sure that that there's no overlap. And I think in general. A good rule of thumb is that if you have four words or more in common between the two sources to just try to um, rewrite your sentence and that just avoids any kind of problem. 
Okay, so with those um, guidelines, let's do a little example exercise. So here's a source. Um, I took this from the internet. The source uh, that I read was, since teachers and administrators do not distinguish between deliberate and accidental plagiarism, the heart of avoiding plagiarism, plagiarism is to write in your own words when your reference is out of your line of sight, okay? So a plagiarized sentence would look something like what I show below. Basically what I did is I changed, what, four or five words, six words, seven words, something like that. I changed a few words, but really the sentence has many, many words that are overlapping, um, more than four in a row. And the sentence basically says the same thing that we saw before. Even if you strategically change a few words here and there, if the, if the sentence structure is basically the same and you have more than four words uh, repeating from that original source, you will be plagiarizing. So what do you do? What do you do? Again, you put the source away and you write a sentence. And so I wrote a sentence that I thought sounded pretty good and really was in my own words. So here's my original use. Writing in your own words without the aid of references is critical to avoid intentional or accidental plagiarism which are both inexcusable in the eyes of professors and administrators. You can see what looked like a perfectly beautiful sentence as our source, I was able to transform that sentence into something that made sense to me and likely fits better into the context of my, of my, um, my document, okay? So it's, it, it's something that you have to be committed to, but once you get used to the paraphrasing, I think you'll be really good at it. You'll, you'll get good at it. And so let's do a little exercise together. I know we have a large class and it's online. And I'll be honest, I've never done this before. But, but let's try to do a little exercise together. So I'm going to give you a few minutes. What we're going to do in these few minutes is I would like you to paraphrase this sentence, which I actually took from the chemistry department's website. So here's the quote. The Department of Chemistry at Wayne State University is dedicated to research, education, and outreach efforts that benefit Detroit, the state of Michigan, and the world. Oh, now, I think this is actually a pretty difficult one to, um, to paraphrase, but I think we should, that's why I wanted to do it together. So, um, so why don't you take a few minutes to uh, try to paraphrase that, and, and we'll come together as a class. I see that Eric has his hand raised, so while you guys are um, coming up with a new sentence in your own words, um, Eric, why don't you ask your question? Um, somebody, Daniel O, uh, they, they asked a question. It says, hello, Professor Flum. How about an image? Can you use an image or a, prick or a picture from a, a different and reference it? Oh, that's a great, great, great question. Great question. I would say in general, no. <laughs> in general, no. There are a few exceptions. If you want to use somebody else's figure in a publication, you can gain copyright permission. That's possible, but I'd say it's not very common. So um, in general, no, you need to make your own figures. Ed, do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, generally, um, I mean, and what Marie Kay, I mean, I completely, first of all, I completely agree. And second of all, by, by the copyright permission, I mean, we mean it, you have to go to the journal, you have to file for the copyright permission, you have to get it. Moreover, when you're trying to publish something like that, you would have to acknowledge uh, the copyright permission explicitly in the figure caption. Uh, all of these things have to be done. If you don't do them, you know things may turn legal. I mean, this is this is how bad it may it may get. Especially if you are doing if you are doing something for profit. Uh, so, my general recommendation would be uh, not to do it at least in the context of this class for sure. Uh, and uh, there are many ways how you can navigate this angle. For example, you can create your own uh, images. For example, you can create your own uh, images of the chemical reactions, and this is fairly easy to do. Uh, this way you are creating your own material. Part of the problem with graphics, it's really copyrighted material as an image. So. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think in general, no. And in fact, most of the time copying somebody else's image is actually not appropriate for what you want to do. The fact is you probably want to, you want to highlight a different aspect of the image than what they have in there. So it's, it's nice to actually make your own image um, when you can. But unless you're writing a review paper, then it's kind of expected. Yeah, that's maybe another gray area. But again, you can get permission. It's just a little bit of a pain and um, 
anyway, but you can do that. Right, and I, th I think what I'd like to emphasize is there is a distinction between original and derivative work. Derivative is, you know, you're taking it from somebody else and you're trying to put it in this review or mini review paper regardless. Uh, in this class, we really want you to develop original ideas, original graphics, original things. So, all right. So, um, so thanks for that question, um, Daniel. Um, if you have a paraphrase that you want to share with us, um, why don't you write it in the um, in the group chat? And I look, I see, I see Jordan has one, but I think we'll let the students try. <laughs> Thank you, Jordan. Any students want to uh, add one? All right, well, we'll start with Jordan's then. Thanks, Jordan, for contributing um, yours. So let me just put this up. So here's Jordan's um, suggestion. Wayne State University Department of Chemistry's mission is to promote scientific research scholarship and outreach to Detroit, Michigan and beyond. Beautiful. So it really captures the idea, but it kind of rearranges it to make it its own. Any other suggestions? All right, well, I'm waiting seven seconds because they say that if you wait seven seconds, that's somehow sometimes how long it takes. So that seems painfully long in an online setting. <laughs> All right. So maybe this can be your challenge for yourself to rate, make an even more different. So I actually wrote my own sentence, which I have uh, down here, just in case there wasn't as much participation as I'm hoping. I hope you guys get used to I like these in, in law, these, uh, um, I like these in-class activities, so you'll see this quite a bit, and we'll use the chat as we can. So this was my version, research and education, and research, education, and community engagement that, that improves, I guess, improves our local Detroit area as well as our greater state of Michigan and world is the mission of the chemistry department at Wayne State University. So again, very different. You might think that that sentence, it's got a lot of key words that might make it difficult to paraphrase, but you got to just practice, folks, and that's how we get better at this. So please challenge yourself um, to, um, to really write these paraphrased sentences. Um, and I, again, I, it's a skill. you got to practice it, and I'm telling you, you're going to be fantastic at it. Okay, so let me just finish this up. I hope that helped. We will talk about this again because the fact is you, we really don't start our true writing for another of I, probably till next week. So we'll bring this up again, but I wanted to really emphasize this issue because I think it's the heart of what makes this class going to be useful to you. Okay, so um, with that, let me go on to just um, bring up a few issues. So in addition to the issue of, of figures that, that Daniel brought up earlier, um, oh wait, I have a, a raised hand from, from Timothy. Timothy, what's your question? Yeah, so you mentioned earlier that um, one way to prevent um, like this plagiarism stuff, if you don't prevent it, it makes your writing very, very robust. And so we have to kind of paraphrase so that it makes the work very, very concise. Now, my question is that from what you paraphrased for the previous um, sentence, I realized that your paraphrase sentence was a bit longer than the source. When you are realizing something like that, what do you do? Yeah, so, uh, so I agree with you. I think something that we will teach you in a few weeks when we start getting to our real writing portion of the class is we'll teach you that fewer words is better, right? Fewer words will be better. And I agree with you. You could be critical of my sentence that fewer words you know, it does not have fewer words. So this really emphasized the next point, and this is something we'll get into later, and um, we can't cover it all today. But the, the next thing you will learn is that you write a sentence that you think is good, and then guess what? You have to rewrite it and rewrite it and rewrite it. So a good writer knows that revision of their sentences is critical. So I wrote this last night when I, when I came up with this, 
And you're right, I think it's not the best sentence, but it is in my own words. And by um, process of revising my own words, I can make it into that clear, concise sentence that I want. So thank you for bringing that up. That's another point that we will make as we get into kind of writing. Oh, and I see that now three more students have, have given us their, um, their thoughts on writing. So I'll, I'll put these up here. I, I really appreciate the participation. I love it. Um, let's see, I'll put up this one. Um, in the suburbs of Detroit, Wayne State University Department of Chemistry is charged with active research, outreach, and teaching excellence both locally and globally. Isn't that fantastic? Wonderful. And then I'll just read the other ones because I can't fit them on my slide, but another one, um, the main inspiration of the chemistry department at Wayne State University is to improve education and research, not only in Detroit, but also in the state of Michigan in the world. So you guys can look at the chat. You, wonderful work, you guys. I'm really excited about um, the, the great writing that we're going to see in this class. And I think you guys are really learning the way to do that. So, um, so thank you. Um, uh, Timothy, I think you, your hand, you're done with your question, right? Yes, please, I'm done. Okay, I'll lower your hand for you. Okay, so let's finish up this part because I do want to get on to your assignment and our, our big challenge for our, um, our next class. Um, so let's um, just finish a, a little discussion about self-plagiarism. So we talked about um, uh, copying figures um, and thank you for that discussion, but let's talk a little bit about self-plagiarism. So this is a situation where you've written something in your own words, but you want to use that that information again. So this is where you like, for example, want to turn in a, the same assignment for two classes, or you might, for example, want to write a paper and then use that same paper in your thesis. These are situations of self-plagiarism. And the fact is, um, this is a bit of it more of a gray area. The fact is that turning in the same assignment for two classes is likely to be against the rules. And you have to talk to your faculty member about that. Don't assume that they will be happy with you submitting the same assignment twice for the, you know, twice uh, for two different classes. Um, but you're welcome to bring that up with your faculty member and see if they would be interested. Now, in terms of copyright infringement, remember, once you have published that paper, it is copyright protected. And you now have to ask permission to use your own words. So please realize that when you get to the point where you are uh, using your papers in your thesis, you will have to get that copyright permission. So self-plagiarism is something that we understand happens, but we have ways of working around it to make sure all of the credit is being given. Okay, so um, let me move on. I thought I had a question, but I guess I don't. Okay, so um, why do we have to be so careful about plagiarism? I mean, it's just our words, right? Well, the fact is that plagiarism is really a slippery slope to leading to bigger and worse and more terrible um, misconduct. And in fact, there are some really impressive examples of people who plagiarized and had really significant effects on their careers. One of them is this, uh, the president of Hamilton College, a small liberal arts college in New York. He actually plagiarized uh, words from an uh, Amazon book that he was looking at when he wrote this speech. Um, and he got found out and he actually had to resign as a president of a university. So um, I think this is a really amazing example of how even, you know, upper administration at a university um, needs to be as ethical as we can. And I think something a little bit more, I don't know, a little bit, I don't know if it's heavier or lighter. Um, I think you all heard the, a few years ago, uh, Melania's speech during the national convention. Um, actually found some uh, evidence of plagiarism from a, a prior speech from Michelle Obama. And that, of course, made a lot of news and there was a lot of uh, loss of credibility because of that. So that's maybe a more politicized um, situation, but I thought it really shows that it's not, and just in science, where plagiarism is, can be really corrupting of our system. So, uh, so we need to take it seriously. And I think, you know, the fact is, I'll go to the next slide. This is really a slippery slope. The problem is that if people think you can start plagiarizing and stealing other people's words and ideas, it means that you might be willing to go even farther down that slippery soap to do more serious forms of misconduct like, like um, uh, you know, uh, fabrication of data. So even the smallest misconduct can lead to more serious uh, infractions. And so, right, so what we need to do as modern scientists is take all forms of misconduct seriously. Do not do them. 
have as ethical behavior as you can. Um, and, and, you know, I have this prior example, you know, the financial crisis back in 2009 was a lot um, caused by the dishonest work of people in the, um, in the housing industry by allowing people to buy houses that were not affordable to them. And so this is just an article I took from the Federal Trade Commission signing that, you know, the, um, you know, the people were given loans that weren't supposed to, and it was unethical behavior in their profession. And that's why we need to keep ethical behavior in our own profession. Okay, so I think I'll stop there. I do have a few, um, again, this is posted on the Canvas website. So I do have a few nice um, resources here on avoiding plagiarism. And this, of course, is something that we'll bring up again um, when, we, um, when we talk about writing skills. So, all right, any questions before I move on um, from this plagiarism issue and from um, the, the task of, of paraphrasing, which you guys are gonna get very good at as we move through this course? <laughs> 